Welcome to this Wise Owl tutorial on creating calculated columns within Power Pivot. Here's what you'll learn during the tutorial. We'll start with a look at the data model you'll need for the examples, then we'll look at how to create basic calculated columns with simple expressions. We'll then look at some of the functions within Power Pivot, the IF function to test conditions, the SWITCH function to test more than one condition at a time, the related function, which is a bit like a VLOOKUP and allows you to look up fields from other tables. And the BLANK function, which allows you to test for things being blank or null, as is often called in other applications. We'll then have a brief look at the Power Pivot function wizard, which might make creating expressions easier for you. And finally, we'll look at some of the symbols you might see in expressions or formally within Power Pivot, and also have a peek forward to see what's next in this tutorial series. So let's get started. If you've been following the series of tutorials, you'll have already downloaded the Make a Mammal database. If not, you can get it from the link shown on this YouTube page. What we're going to do is create a data model. I'm going to go through this very quickly because those who are frequent viewers will be sick of doing this. So I'll just go through all the steps needed. And the tables I'm going to include are going to be the animal table, the product table and the transaction table. So animal, product, transaction. And what I'm going to do is remove the TBL from each of the names of these three tables to give them friendlier names. We're going to be referring to these a lot. When I finish it will import the data and in diagram view I'll have my three tables linked together. We're going to add additional columns to them. Before we do that let's just create a quick pivot table and what I'll do is group by the animal name and show the quantity. And it's aggregating the sum of the quantity for each animal. What we're now going to do is start adding some calculated fields. What I'm going to do is begin by showing how to create the amount of each transaction, which is the price times the quantity. To create calculated fields like this, you need to go into Data View. If you then go to the transaction table, you can add any form you like at the top of a new column. It's just like creating a formula in Excel, with the difference that the formula you create will automatically be assigned and calculated for every single row of the table. You'll see that happening in a second. To begin the formula, I'm going, you can type in an equal sign, and there's two different ways to pick up in a column. The first way is to just click on the column, and it will automatically put the name of the column in, in square brackets. I'm going to multiply that by the quantity. For the second way, you can type in a square bracket and the opening square bracket symbol will then allow you to get at the field concerned. I want the quantity so I can choose that and press the tab key to put it into my formula and when I press return Power Pivot will automatically create the same calculation for every single row of the table. It's called Calculator Column 1 at the moment. What I can do is to rename that and call it something more sensible like Amount. And essentially that's another column in the table. To use the column, I can go into Excel, so I can click perhaps on the Excel link, and you'll see underneath the transaction table, my amount column has been added. So what I can do is take away the quantity and add the amount to show the total amount spent for each animal. If I go back into Power Pivot, it's sometimes useful to sort by a column, either largest to smallest or smallest to largest, to see whether the data you've created makes sense or not. It's time now to get a bit more ambitious with our functions and what we're going to do is determine whether things are cheap or expensive by looking at the price. The price band we're going to use is this. Anything which is less than £10 will be deemed to be cheap as chips. Anything costing £10 or more will be deemed to be expensive tat. In the wise our world everything's either black or white. We'll do this using the if function and the syntax of that is shown here. If the condition is true, we'll do this, <coughs> otherwise we'll do this instead. It's exactly the same as the syntax of the F function in Excel. Just going through that in more detail, here's a list of the arguments. The first argument is the condition being tested, that's the first thing to go into the function. In this case it would be whether the price is less than 10 or not. The second thing is what to do if this condition is true, which in this case will be to put in the words cheap as chips. And finally, we'll put in what to do if the condition isn't true, which is the words expensive tat. So let's have a go at doing this in Power Pivot. You create a new column by clicking at the top of the column and typing in equals. You can then have type in the if function and then type in an open bracket. And you can see listed out the three arguments. 
The one in square brackets at the end is actually an optional argument, although quite what the consequences would be of missing it out, I've never worked out. So I can now click on the price column and type in less than 10, put a comma in to pick up on the true condition, or the true part of the condition. This is going to be the words cheap as chips, and they'll need to go in double inverted commas to signify that they're just text. Otherwise, failing that, I'll put in the words expensive tat. I need to close my brackets to complete the function, and when I press return, every single column will contain one of the two expressions. If I sort it by transaction ID, i.e. more or less randomly, you'll see some are cheap as chips and some are expensive tat. What I can then do is rename that column to call it verdict. And when I go back into my pivot table, which is on sheet two, I can use that new column to analyze things. So if I add that as a column, you can see it's divided things into things which are cheap as chips and expensive tat. And the obvious conclusion from looking at this is you don't really want to be buying a snake or a penguin because they seem to be the most expensive items in general. I've got bad news for watchers of this tutorial. The people who run the Make a Mammal database have decided they want to categorise prices into three bands, not two. Here's what they want to achieve. Anything costing up to £5 will be low, anything £5 to £10 will, will be middling, and anything costing 10 or more will be high. So what we need to do is extend our if function. One way to do that is this horrible monstrosity. I'll show you the better way in a second. What this is doing is saying if the price is less than 5, I'll call it low. Otherwise, if the price is less than 10, I'll call it medium. Otherwise, when I get to this point, I've exhausted all other possibilities. It must be more than £10, and I'll call it high. Nested if functions like this are hard to write and hard to maintain, but in Excel they're the only way forward. Apart from using a VLOOKUP, of course. What we're going to do is use the switch function, which isn't available in Excel, to achieve the same thing in a better way. The syntax of the switch function looks like this. The first argument is what you're looking for. In this case, we're going to be looking for something which evaluates to true, but we could put anything we like as the first argument. We'll then have the first condition and what we'll do if it matches the true value we're looking for. A second condition and what to do if that matches and we'll carry on with as many pairs of arguments as we like until we get to the final condition. Looking at those arguments in more detail, the first argument is what we're trying to find which in this case will be the value true. The second and third argument will be the first condition and what to return if it matches the true we're looking for. We'll then have the fourth and fifth argument which will be the second condition and what to do if that's true. And so it goes on until eventually we run out of conditions to test. So you can see for the switch function, the second and third arguments onwards come in pairs. To enter this function then, what we're going to do is go back to Power Pivot, and what I'll do is begin the function. I can type equals. I can then type switch, which is the name of the function, followed by an open bracket. The thing I'm going to look for is something which is true. I can then type the first condition, which in this case will be whether the price is less than 5. I can type a comma in to go on to my next argument, which is what I'll return if that is true, which is the word low. Moving on to my second condition, that's that the price should be less than 10. I already know it isn't less than 5. If that's true, then the price band must be middling. And finally, if I get to this point, I know it's not less than 5 and it's not less than 10. I don't really want to put another condition in, so what I'm going to do is just put the word true in, which will mop up all other possibilities. So for all other possibilities other than the price being less than 5 or 10, what I'm going to do is put in the word high. I can then press return to confirm that, and it will fill in exactly the same values. But the switch function is much easier to understand and much easier to, and under, to add additional price bands in in the future. I'll give that a better name. I'll call it price band. And what I can then do, as before, is go back to Excel and add that into my pivot table. What I'll do is get rid of the verdict and I'll analyze things by the price band instead. And you can see it divides sales into high, low and middling. So that's the switch function. 
What we'll now do is go on to look at the related function, showing you how you can link different tables together. What I want to look at now is one of my favorite functions in Power Pivot, which is related. It's not my favorite function because I like the syntax. I just like the effects of it. Have a look at this pivot table and you'll see the pivot table field list on the right hand side is a mess. And even if I were to manage to strip out all the unnecessary and unwanted fields, it would still be a mess because I've got these three tables and I only really want to see information from one of them. From a user's point of view, it's quite distracting to see extra tables. You can combine tables together to produce effects like this. In this case, I produced a pivot table and it looks from the point of view of the user as if there's only a single table because I've managed to combine fields from different tables into one. Now to see how this works, I'll just close this file down and return back to the original one. And if we go into Power Pivot, what we're going to do is tidy up the data model. Let's start with Diagram View. I've already said I don't want to see the animal table, so I'm going to right click on that and hide it from client tools. And I don't want to see the product one either. I'm also going to get rid of the first few fields in the transaction table by hiding them from my client tools. And forgive me, but I'm going to delete a couple of the extra columns I created so that I'm left with just a price band. Now having done all of that, I'm left with a problem that my pivot table doesn't have any fields in. You can see the only thing I've got available are the amount and the price band. So what I need to do is go back into Power Pivot and in Data View I'm going to create a calculated column which brings in the animal name and the product name. The reason this is going to work is because there's a direct relationship from the transaction table to the product which will allow me to pick up the product name and also a direct relationship from the transaction table through to the animal table so I can pick up the animal name. The animal name is going to be picked up using something like a VLOOKUP of a VLOOKUP. In Excel, this would be quite difficult to do, but in Power Pivot, the relation fun related function will solve the problem for us. So let's go back to data view, and the syntax of it is very simple. You type equals, you type equals, and then if you type in the name of the function, which is related, you then go to the name of the table and click on the field you want to bring in, in this case, the animal name, close the brackets and press return and it will display the name of the animal which I'm going to rename and call animal name. I can do the same thing for the product so I can type equals related I can go to the product table I can click on the product name close the brackets and I'm going to call that product. I've used an inconsistent naming convention just to prove that you can use any name you like. If I now go back into Excel, in the transaction table, the related columns I brought in from the other tables are available to me to include in my pivot table. So I can include the animal name to create the same pivot table as I had earlier. And this is one of the things I love about Power Pivot, being able to combine fields from lots of different tables and get the user to perceive them as if they all came from the same table makes pivot tables so much easier to use. What I want to do now is to look at the equivalent of the SQL Server null and access null values. In Power Pivot, it's called blank. To do this, if we go back into Power Pivot, what I'm going to do is display the animal table by right clicking on it in Diagram View and choosing Unhide from Client Tools. This will mean I can display the legs column which I want to get at. So back in Excel, I can choose to hide the animal name and I'll display the legs instead. And what you can see is it's summarizing the data according to whether animals have zero, two, or four legs. I really like this to display biped and quadruped. So what I'm going to do is display, or rather create a separate worksheet. I'll put the headings as legs and description. And they'll be my new columns. And I'll type in the legs I know about. So I'm pretty certain a two-legged animal, which includes us by the way, is a biped. And a four-legged animal is probably called a quadruped but I'm not quite sure about zero-legged animals, so I'll leave that out. I can turn this into a table by clicking on Insert on the ribbon and choosing Table. My table does have headers, and I'll call my table, instead of Table 1, I'll call it Legginess. What I can now do is to add that into the Power Pivot Data Model. So on the Power Pivot tab, I can choose Add to Data Model, and it will come in there. 
I need to relate that to the animal table, so I'm going to create that relationship. Now that I've done that, I can use the control key to select both the animal and legginess tables, and I can hide them from my client tools. And what I'll do is I'll add in a field in the transactions table, which will display the um, legginess of the animal. I'm going to do this in two stages. The first thing we'll do is use a related column, which will automatically pick up from the legginess column the description. When I press return, you'll see that in some cases it gives me quadruped or biped, but for snakes it just gives me a blank. What I'll do is rename that and call that intermediate because I'm not actually going to display it in the final pivot table. What I can then do is create an additional column which basically says if the intermediate column here is blank, I'll display a good description for a zero-legged animal instead. At this point in the tutorial, I still haven't quite thought what that's going to be. So we can say equals if the intermediate column equals now to put the word blank in you type blank open brackets close brackets which is a function which returns the value blank which is a special significance in the power pivot so if that's true what I'm going to do is put in and now it's crunch time a zero-legged animal is called and let's call it a nothing ped it doesn't sound very biological but it will have to do otherwise I will use the intermediate column this time when I press return it will actually fill in or replace values for the blanks. I'll call the new column I've just created um, legs and what I can then do is go back into my pivot table and I can get rid of the legs I had before and choose my new better description and I can now see everything aggregated by whether it's a biped, a quadruped or a nothing ped. So that's how you can use the blank value or the blank function to test for nulls. So far, every time we've created a calculated column, we've done it by typing it in. But you can also use the function wizard, and I thought I'd briefly show that. It works almost exactly the same way as in Excel, but probably isn't quite as good. What I want to do is work out how many characters there are in each animal name. There's five in sheep, three in cat, five in tiger, etc. And to do that, I'll use the len function, but I'm going to pretend I don't know about it. I can click on the function wizard tool here to insert a function. And I can either type in the first letter of my function, which will allow me to access it easily. There it is, it's a len function. Or failing that, I can look for it in all the different categories. Len sounds like it's to do with text, because it's working out how many characters are in a bit of text. So that's what I'll choose on this occasion. And the categories are usually reasonably obvious what to choose. So I can choose text, and then I'll see a subset of just of the text functions. When I choose Len, it will give me a description of what the function actually does and the arguments it takes. And when I choose OK, I'll be able to complete my function by clicking on the animal name, typing a close bracket, and pressing return. And it will give me how many characters are in the animal name. So that's just one example of using the function wizard. Just to finish this section on power pivot calculator columns, what I thought I'd do is show some of the symbols you might encounter in your expressions. We'll begin with looking at whether two things are both true. In Excel, you would use the AND function for this. In power pivot, you use two ampersand symbols repeating one after the other. So for example, this expression would say if the animal name is sheep, and the quantity is 1, then display the words cheap ovine, otherwise just put a blank. Conversely, you could say if either one of two things is true, and in that case you would use the double pipe symbol. You'll find this vertical bar just to the left of the Z key on most keyboards. It's not the most commonly used key on the keyboard. As an example of this, you could say if the amount is more than 10 and the quantity bought is more than 1, then call it a pricey transaction, otherwise call it normal. And with that look at symbols, we complete looking at calculated columns in Power Pivot. In the next couple, maybe three or four tutorials in this series, we're going to look at calculated fields, which use the DAX expression language. But actually, we've already been using that in calculated columns, I just haven't mentioned it. If you like what you've seen and heard so far, why not head over to the WiseR website, where you can find loads more free resources, including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.